Hi everyone, it's Marla. Welcome to a video teaching going along with 365 Prophecy, our Bible study in which we're taking a look at Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah, which have been fulfilled by Jesus in the New Testament. If you'd like to join us, you can just go to injesusname.net and subscribe and you'll start getting all these teachings sent directly to your email inbox. For today's teaching, we're going to kind of uh, go round and round all over the Bible, and I really want to show you a very interesting prophecy in which Jesus fulfills a law that was put forward in the book of, of, um, of Deuteronomy. Now, we have been talking a whole lot about uh, one particular prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy, which is a prophecy that has been made by Moses about a prophet to come that is going to be like him. It, this prophecy is found in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 22, and it's really plopped right in the middle of the law of Moses. And um, it just seems completely out of place, which I'll tell you, when you're reading your Bible, if something just seems to be plopped in there and it just makes no real uh, connection to anything before it or after it, you really should stop and take notice. And that's, that's sort of like this prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy. Um, it, it's just sort of in there, but, but you're going to realize as you're reading the New Testament how very important this prophecy was. Uh, to the Jewish people at that time. Because you're going to see very often when, when Jesus is uh, doing a miracle or speaking, that the people, the Jewish people's reaction is, could this be the prophet that we are waiting for? And that prophet is referring back to this prophecy of a prophet found in the book of Deuteronomy. The reason why they were so keen on this particular prophecy is because Moses to the Jewish people was their premier prophet. I mean, even today, if you were to, to ask a Jewish person who was the most um, the most famous, the most foremost prophet of your of your faith, they would say Moses. And so the Jewish people knew very well all the, the teachings of Moses, the laws of Moses, and they knew the prophecies of Moses because he was their foremost prophet. And this prophecy of a prophet to come. To, that was going to be just like Moses was on their minds because they knew that this prophet was going to be the Messiah. So you'll see in places like John 6 14, uh, John 7 40, the people saying, hey, is Jesus the prophet? And that's, that's why they're saying it because of their waiting for this prophecy of a prophet to come that was spoken by Moses. Now, it's, it's many other places in the New Testament, this, this idea of a prophet to come. But one of the places that I want you to focus in on is in Acts. Um, this is in Acts 3, and it's spoken by Peter, where you can see that Peter is directly connecting Jesus to this prophecy of the prophet to come delivered by Moses in Deuteronomy. So this is in Acts 3. Uh, 22 through 23 and um, Peter is is talking to the Jewish people and, and basically telling them you missed it you you missed everything that the prophets have have said about the Messiah to come and very especially you missed this prophecy given by Moses about the prophet to come and you'll see this in Acts 3 22 23 this is Peter speaking he says Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to the prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And like I said, in context, Peter is talking all about how the Jewish people missed Jesus and how they killed him. And because of that, they themselves are going to be destroyed. So it's a direct uh, fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, I'm honing in on this so hard because I do want you to recognize that wherever you see something in the Bible um, said once, you're going to see it said again. We've looked over these last few days about all the other different ways that Jesus fulfills this fact that he is the prophet that Moses talked about. And now here again, we have Peter directly tying him to this. So in the Bible, the Bible always confirms itself. 
We talked about this a, a, a few a, a week or so back um, in another in another way that you know when we're talking about the bones of the Messiah not to not being broken. You see that prophesied in a number of different places, and you see it fulfilled by Jesus. You you're never going to see in the Bible just something put one off. The Bible confirms itself so that um, you can look at it and say, wow, how could it be that this was spoken by, you know, Moses here and then it was fulfilled by Jesus here and here and here and here. Or you'll see in the Old Testament, oh, this was spoken by Isaiah and then it was also spoken by um, one of the other prophets and here Jesus fulfilled it here and here. There's always going to be corroborating evidence within the Bible. And that is because the Bible itself says that you should never ever trust something uh, that is just spoken by one witness. And this itself is our prophecy for today. The fact that Jesus came to fulfill the laws of Moses. And one of those laws is found in the book of Deuteronomy, just like this other um, thing was found in Deuteronomy that Jesus fulfilled in multiple different ways. There is a law that says that there's going to be the testimony of one or more witnesses uh, put forward so that something can be proved to be true. The Bible fulfills its own law about itself. <laughs> so uh, if I didn't confuse you, let me see if this can figure, <laughs> get it straight for you. So our 365 prophecy verse is in um, Deuteronomy 19, and it's going to be found in Deuteronomy 19, 15 through 21. I'm going to read the whole thing so you know what I'm talking about. So this prophecy is um, about the laws concerning witnesses, and we're going to see how it's fulfilled by the Messiah in the New Testament. The laws concerning witnesses, Deuteronomy a 1915 says a single witness shall not suffice against a person for any crime or for any wrong in connection with any offense that he committed only on the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses shall a charge be established if a malicious witness arises to accuse a person of wrongdoing then both parties to the dispute shall appear before the Lord before the priests and the judges who are in office in those days the judges shall inquire diligently, and if the witness is a false witness and has accused his brother falsely, then you shall do to him as he has meant to do to his brother. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Um, I won't read the rest, but that's the gist of it, okay? So the, the Bible is saying, one of the laws of Moses is saying that you should never ever accept the testimony of one witness. It has to be brought forward in one or two different places, like we just saw with this prophecy about the prophet. It's brought forward in many different ways and fulfilled by Jesus in many different places. A, a testimony has to be true and it has to be given by, by two or three people or in order for it to be true. That is a law of Moses. Now Jesus fulfills this law of Moses about testimony being given by him being true and it is in John uh, chapter 8. In John chapter 8, you're going to see um, Jesus, who has just been um, speaking to people about himself being the light of the world. And they don't, they don't believe him. All right, he, I'll, I'll read it to you. In John 8, 17 and 18, it says this. Um, excuse me, in John uh, 8, 12, it says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. So the Pharisees are, are in here pointing to this law of Moses saying, you can't come here and tell us just by you saying you, one person saying you're the light of the world, that you can't say that because we need two or three witnesses to that and you are just saying that on yourself. So you're a false witness. It's not true. 
He's spe speaking to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He's telling them that whoever follows him is not going to walk in darkness, not going to um, go to, to hell, basically. They're going to have the light of life. They're going to have eternal life if they follow him. And the Pharisees are saying, we don't believe you. You're just one person coming forward. Now, Jesus fulfills the law of Moses here, given in Deuteronomy, when he says in John 8, 12 through 13, this. He follows up and says, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is where he says it in uh, chapter 8, 17 and 18, he says, in your law, it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would also know my father. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but nobody arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So you can see Jesus here fulfilling this law of Moses that says that two or more people have to say something when he says that not only have I said this about myself, that I'm the way to eternal life, but my father has said this. And you don't recognize it because you don't know my father. <laughs> and so Jesus is saying that two people has sworn to this, himself and his father. This is a beautiful place within the scripture that you can see the Trinity Part of the Trinity being spoken about. Jesus is saying that he and his father are one. They agree on this thing. And, and yet they're two separate people. So it's, it's very cool because, you know, Jesus and his father, one God, uh, along with the Holy Spirit. But they're two separate persons who can have um, a testimony for themselves. And of course, since they're one person, <laughs> they agree on, on the fact that Jesus is the way to have eternal life. And so it's kind of a cool, kind of a mind bending, scrambling kind of a prophecy. But we know that Jesus came to fulfill every part of the law. That's, that's part of him being the Messiah. And so Jesus um, was fulfilling this prophecy about the fact that that testimonies had to be made by two or more people in order for a testimony to be true. Now, the really um, interesting and intriguing part about this, if you remember back to when I read that Deuteronomy passage, it said that if a person bears false witness about themselves against or, or false witness about somebody else, then the thing that they intended to happen to that somebody else is going to happen to them. So interestingly here, we, we recognize that the Pharisees did not believe Jesus and, and Jesus' father's testimony about himself. The testimony that said, if you don't believe in me, you're going to die and go to hell. And because they didn't believe, what did they do? They caused Jesus to pay the penalty for coming forward with one testimony, which in their minds was false. They killed him. On the cross which was the direct thing that Jesus you know you know that 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 caused it so that people could have eternal life so they didn't believe him when he said that if you if you believe in me you're gonna have eternal life and then they caused the penalty to happen for him bearing false witness which is the thing that caused people to have eternal life and so their law sort of worked against them but worked for us um, you know, they thought he was bearing fal false witness, and so they exacted a penalty on him for bearing false witness. But that penalty served to be the thing that made his testimony become true. He died, he rose again, so we have eternal life. <laughs> Woo, that is a mind bender, but <laughs> it's confirmed all over your Bible in multiple different places, and that is how we know that this book is true. There is absolutely no way that 40 different people could write 66 different books over thousands of years and have all these things confirmed in multiple different places by multiple different people and have it all come to give the same message that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, come to die on a cross, be buried, rose again after three days, and repentance and belief in him is what can give you eternal life. 
All right, I'll see you again next time. Bye now. It's in Jesus' name I'm doing it all.